So I'm going to start off by making quite thick uh, recycled bags, Amazon wrapping paper, wallpaper, lining paper, tissue paper, anything you might have around. I've got quite a lot of stuff around because I do it all the time. And the way I do it is, um, it doesn't matter if it's wrinkled because it's going to be made into a, a mould to make bowls and vessels on. But I do it on, the, on these um, very long beach mats, the grass beach mats, because they stick well and then when you finish you can peel them back off. So I'm going to start off with wallpaper paper, lining paper and tissue paper. The only reason I've got the two is that the tissue paper I find if you put it on this after it's been um, stuck on with PVA glue it tends to absorb lots of the glue and it makes it dry much quicker. So first stage is first. I've just put a piece of uh, plastic. I'm using the recycling bags for paper and card because they're just the right size if you well, for me anyway, if you cut that off. So, here we go. That's a pile of lining paper. And here's a pile of tissue paper. Any paper. That's just what I happen to have. And here's the glue. So, start to put it on. This is quite good because it will go through and just hold itself in place through the weave just a little bit, not too much, so that it can be taken off when the time comes. I'm not going to do the whole length. I have done it on a much bigger table and done it sort of by a six foot length at a time, which is good, but we don't need that much. So I'm going to put uh, tissue paper down first so that it gets into. Now the thing about glue, we're using PVA glue. Had I been using flour and water, I would have had to put very little on because the thing about flour and water, unless you add salt, it will go mouldy, but even adding salt, if it's put in a climate, a room, or you know, what time of the year where it's cold and damp, flour and water paste is hygroscopic, so that means it will absorb all the water in the atmosphere. And if you're having a particularly damp summer or a cold and miserable winter, um, it's just going to go soggy and it will eventually go mouldy and the mould spores will get in there. So, although flour and water does give a much crisper, harder, sharper, perhaps more brittle paper um, substrate, no. um, I think PVA glue is pretty good, actually. So I'm just going to carry on doing this, and you won't want to watch me doing this, so I will pause the video. So I'm just going to put some pieces of this wallpaper paper, like that, just put them in, soak them for a couple of minutes, and then just leave them here. And the wonderful thing about this is that the paper is quite... I, I buy wallpaper paste because it's got very little size in it, so it absorbs glue easily, it's really good. But it is a nice thick one, and so it's really good if we can let it soak for a bit. It becomes almost like fabric, it's a lovely thing to work with. So I'm going to move that there and carry on and do that. So this is a layer of tissue paper with PVA glue followed by a layer of ripped up intersections, white wallpaper lining paper, creamy colour, and then another layer of tissue paper. So it makes a sort of sandwich. And then I'm going to leave this to dry and then I shall repeat it about six or seven times. And, um, and then I think it will be strong enough to use to make the basic shape on which to build up the future papier-mâché dishes. It's also a great thing, you can then um, put papier-mâché paste all over it, you can roll into it, um, impress things into it, and you can use it as a sort of, um, almost like a kind of painting board. Yeah, it is a painting board really, um, but uh, one you've made yourself and you've got control over everything about it then.
it's great. Okie dokie. So I've got a few pieces of uh, paper here, maybe about eight actually, and I want to dry it out thoroughly, so I'm going to use an iron. Hairdryer works a bit, but then it occurred to me that hot press paper is put under hot shiny rollers and what's an iron but a hot shiny pressy thing. So I've taken the plastic off my painted display board and on top of it I've put a thick um, cotton you know, sofa spread and the, then the webbing goes back on here, the mat, and the, this goes on here. And then, yeah, that's good. The iron can be used. I think it's, well, I know it works. I'm not saying I think it works, it does work. Not only does it get it completely flat and get all the air out, it also gives it a nice smooth surface and you know for a fact that it's dry. I wonder how many of this iron any longer. I actually only bought this iron for craft work. I gave up ironing a long, long time ago. When the children were little, I used to iron everything. Vests, socks, flannels. Goodness me, flannels, you know, flannels for wiping your face. They've come back in fashion now, haven't they? And they're good, why not? So I'm just going to carry on doing this. It will not be very entertaining. So I'll stop here and listen to the blackbird. I never get tired of the blackbird singing. It's perfect. Perfect. I put some layers of brown paper on as well because Nowadays we get lots of um, carrier bags and paper bags, which actually are brilliant for sort of not using plastic, but some of them just aren't terribly strong. But they're very easy just to sort of break down like that. What I do is I just fold them and fold them, and then I just tear them up so that I've got lots of bits of paper. And then I just store them in a carrier bag but some carry bags are stronger than others. This one isn't very strong. I was in the shop the other evening, last night, and it was raining, and there was a chap there buying cans of beer and things, and obviously his carrier bag was already wet from having walked from home to the shop. And as soon as he put the beer and stuff in it, they just all fell out of the bottom on the floor. So, you know, it's all very well to be eco-friendly, but nice to be aware of what the rain does too. So, next stage, um, I'm going to work on the on this side, yes. Um, I'm going to put some, I've ironed it so it's nice and flat, but I'm just going to start to put, with these brown paper bags, they're so absorbent, they're brilliant. So even though I've just dried it off and ironed it, that was to get the previous water content out and make the glue firm. And then this time I'll just put this on. And it's a good idea to, at this stage I could use a squeegee. Have I got one? I did have a squeegee that was like a sort of window cleaner. But one could use um, an old credit card or something and just pull it down. I thought I had one here but it's disappeared. So, kind of give yourself an idea of where you're going to put that. PV it says PVA and water. It's not 50-50, it's about, um, I don't know. It says you, you can soon gauge to find out what degree of sticky and what degree of water you want to have in. And you'll find now, that's, um, this is a paper bag which is softer. And so I overlap them slightly and turn up my bird song. Isn't that amazing? Blackbird on tap. And then carry on working my way down. So I'll put another coat on here. The thing about craft as opposed to fine art, because I did my degree originally in fine art and was eventually quite a representational painter because I loved 
Oh, I loved the Renaissance painters. I loved the Pre-Raphaelite painters. I loved all those amazing techniques. And I became very aware that I liked to make my own paint brushes and pigments. I was really interested in old glazes, varnishes, mediums of all kinds. And I, got, I love researching. So that goes on with everything, really. I like to learn, always. And I'm always changing my mind and changing my point of view, which is infuriating for some people. But there you go. You learn as you go. And I naturally found, after a while, that my painting wasn't developing quick enough in a way sometimes for my mind. I wanted something that was quicker and other times I wanted something that was much slower and more meditative. And then when I discovered, I also did ceramics as a part of my degree, so when I discovered papier-mâché as an art, well as a medium really, as a craft, I mean it had an amazing history which I go into. I thought I'd have a go. There's a little bit more kind of interesting ways of my how I came to my journey through papier-mâché, which has now been over 35 years. And I like to blend, if you like, fine art and craft together, and the skills that go into craftsmanship, and the vision that goes into fine art, I suppose. But I like, I need to switch, I suppose. What I'm saying is I need to switch between painting, writing, and making. And making for me is like the sort of, the grounded element where it pulls you back down, it roots you, because you are in touch with all the different processes, hands on. And I find it invaluable. I find I can't do the same thing ad infinitum. I actually have to stop and do something else. Um, might be going for a walk or doing the garden. It's rarely doing housework, I have to say. Just once a month I get the urge to tidy the house. <laughs> and then I go for it because I know it won't come again. Um, so I'm just going to carry on like that and um, cover the whole sheet. Let it dry in a bit naturally. Cover it with some tissue paper and then probably dry it again. If you want to dry it quickly, you can just cover it with a sheet of newspaper or something and then you can you can put the iron on it and just dry into it like that, you see, and that will just dry. That's had a blob of glue. Let's try that one. Irons are a great invention. That's pulled that one up a bit. Well, it's because I turned the iron down too. It's not hard trying. But it will, it does, and it will go very, very flat. And um, so I think, what did I say? I had about five sheets on. I'll try and put another five on. And I mean, I could start working with it now. It is, it is flexible and yet stiff enough to start moulding into the, the bowl shapes that I want to do. Um, and the platters and things, but um, I think I'm just going to make it a little bit stiffer. And also I wanted to show you the, the iron technique. Okay, bye.